Bootsy, good girl. Hey guys, welcome to Jarrah's Junk Drawer. I'm JR, this is Boots, and this is Dukina. Last episode, we painted some beautiful Xiangling fan art, and I asked you all what character you wanted to see me paint next. And our suggestion comes in from Reina-kun. I hope I am saying that right. Thank you so much for your comments. Not only did you have a great suggestion, you were the only suggestion. And you kind of saved me from eating my own words. It would kind of backfire if I asked everyone what I should paint next only to be answered by crickets. But I got some great ideas for today's fan art, so let's jump straight into it and get started. My first idea was to have Ningguang on a balcony, maybe with the palace and starry sky behind her. But I wasn't in love with that concept. It would push the emotion of the scene into feeling more distant. And I wanted her to feel more present and active. So I put the first sketch to the side and tried something else out. And that's what sketching is a lot of times, trying out different ideas before finding the one you like. And I was liking the second sketch a lot. It offered a lot of room to pose her dynamically and have her hair really take center stage as a primary element of the painting. Now, I try to be honest with you all about my painting process, and honestly, I could not figure out what to do with her left arm. Her right arm already had the focus pulling out her hairpin, and I didn't want to distract from that by having her left arm also doing something important. I feel like that would feel forced. So instead, I just brought the hair around to cover it up. It, it's a small workaround to a problem that was really bugging me. After having gotten the pose and body language the way I wanted it, the next step was to start the refinement sketch, where I go in and place a lot of the details in the clothing. But despite the fact that I called this a refinement sketch, it's still important to remember that I'm staying loose. Now, being loose with your drawing style doesn't mean just scribbling lines anywhere on the page. It's not about rushing through the process. I have a deliberate goal with every stroke I make, but this isn't final line work, so it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, I would argue that it's actually counterproductive to tunnel vision yourself into working on any one element with the goal of making it perfect. This step is mostly about making sure my proportions and the balance of the image are in a state I'm happy with before moving on to a point where that's more difficult to work with. But enough with the sketch stage, it's time we moved on to flat colors. To keep things simple, easy, and organized, it's important to put some thought into how you want to break up the character into multiple layers. To make that decision, I usually ask myself, what elements are in direct contact with one another that I would prefer to work on independently, using either alpha lock or clipping masks. I've made the choice to break down Ningguang into six primary layers, all of her skin, all of her clothing, and her accessories, which are the her vision and the um, item on her forehead, which I don't know what to call that, but I'm considering it an accessory. I also took all the gold embellishments from across her clothing and gave them their own layer. That way I can experiment with the technique that I want to use on the gold freely at a later stage. But we can talk about that more when we get to that stage. And lastly, I provided two layers for the hair. One for the hair that's in front of her, and one for the hair that is behind her. Normally I might use a few more layers for this step, but Procreate ties your total layer cap to the scale of your canvas, and I hadn't mentioned this yet, but I went with a much larger canvas than I normally do. So instead of my usual 60 layers available, I'm limited to 20. Mainly because of hardware limitations. I am working on a tablet after all. Just know that even though I won't be mentioning it at every step, layer count is something I stayed aware of throughout the entire painting, and was always considering what layers I could merge together to stay below that cap. After flat colors and some basic shading, 
The next job is to work on adding texture to the different materials. Now I have a fair amount of practice with several of these textures, so I didn't need to look up any references yet. With that said, I got to this point because when I don't know how to paint something, I use references to learn. Even now, if I don't know how to paint something or I want to learn a new way to paint something, the first thing I do is look up some references. Otherwise, you're just tying your own hands behind your back. Because at the end of the day, reference material is an incredibly effective learning tool. So you really shouldn't feel bad about making a Google search when you feel like you're stuck. Now, the hair is, it's gonna need a lot of work. I do want it to showcase as a dominant element of this painting after all. Try to look at that first pass is only a rough estimate of the hair as I repaint, using liquify and an eraser to freely manipulate the hair as I see fit. My point is to not get shackled down to an original design. You should always be willing to take a step back and make changes. Paintings progress incrementally, and there are almost always ugly phases along the way. But your vision of the painting should continue to get clearer as you make more refinements. Just try to avoid the mistake that I made a lot when I was learning to paint. The decision to repaint something in front of you should be second nature, and not something you debate by thinking, well, I put so much work into the first pass. Instead, try to think of that first pass as the framework to what you're going to make, something unfinished, and not as what you've already made. At least, that's some of the thinking that helped me get past that mentality. In fact, at the moment, there are two big issues with this painting. One, there's not as much color and saturation as I prefer in my paintings. So I'm going to increase the color in the background and change her hair color from being a purple gray to more of a light taupe or beige. That's actually closer to the color that you'll see in game anyway. And the other big issue is that there's not nearly enough contrast. And that comes from not having emphasized the lighting angle enough yet. This is a common problem for me that I've been trying to work on. I hope to one day get to the point where I feel like I've mastered lighting, but I'm not there yet. I do, however, feel like I gain a better handle on it through every painting. Along with my typical reshaping of the face using Liquify, I tried out something new with the hair that turned out just awesome. By having the highlights go from dark to light, then back to dark and light again, it added a really cool looking shine to it. Or at least I think it looks really good. In fact, I'll probably be using this as my standard go-to technique for hair from now on. Now the hair wasn't the only new technique I tried out this painting. I knew I really wanted to have the gold look good. So I made some changes to how I approach metal. I tried to spend less time smoothing the textures. Instead, I realized that by using hard brushes, it allowed me to leave a lot of the edges in, which gave it more of a worn look. I also threw in a few scratches manually. Not too many, her outfit should have an elegant presence, not that of battle armor. So just a little bit of wear and tear will go a long way. Every now and then, it helps if you take a step back from the painting and spend a minute to evaluate what needs more work and what needs the most work. Right now, doing just that, the first thing to jump out at me is the background. It has virtually no separation to the main character of this image. So there's a few things to be done. On top of everything, let's throw in some experimentation layers, which for this instance means one layer set to multiply and one set to add that I'll be deleting after I try some ideas out. Basically, I'm attempting a rough assembly of the final lighting. Just a quick test to see if the idea I have in my head really does work well or not. And after I've taken some mental notes and gotten a clearer picture of what I want, 
I delete the temporary layers and get to work with that mental image as my goal for what I want to work towards. Add some brightness in the direction of the light source and some nice drop shadows behind Ningguang, all of which will help to bring her off the background. And to add just a little bit more separation, let's use a noise adjustment on the background. This is only a small change, but every step helps. Plus, I liked the way it looked, so I chose to keep it. Just know that to have the effect apply evenly, I did need to merge the background into a single layer. Before I finish up the lighting, I am going to make one last pass to touch up all of the remaining details that still need some work. We'll start at the top and work our way down. First up, let's start fixing her head. It's, a, it's decent for now, but we can do better. The eyes are going to need some reshaping, and I'll tuck her chin in a little more. Emphasize her makeup a bit between the dark orange eyeliner, and I'll go ahead and completely repaint her lips, where she actually only has lipstick on her bottom lip. Just kind of a unique character trait of hers. For the little bit of fur you see around her collar, I had used some round brushes to block it in earlier, but for the finishing touches, I'm going to go ahead and use some of my custom brushes I made specifically for hair and fur. I actually made these brushes like a year or so ago when I first experimented with painting fur. And now it's time to add in the rest of the shading that I tested out earlier. With one multiply layer on top of everything, I filled it in using a medium gray color. Then using an eraser, I chose where the lighting would fall by removing the shadows. Now we're down to the last step with one final layer set to add on top of everything. I'm going to take my time and work through the whole painting. Wow, this was a long painting, but I am so happy with the results. Still not the longest painting I've done, Kalina still holds that record at like 83 hours or something. But damn, this painting certainly had its fair share of experimentation and detailing. Oh yeah, and the uh, metal, just wow, absolutely beautiful. Worth every minute I spent on it. But really, so many of the small details of this painting turned out amazing. All the way down to the glow of her, um, what would, what would those be called? Um, I don't know, uh, coattails I'll go with. I'm not familiar with the fashion terminology, but they turned out great. 
Probably the most challenging part of the process was that coming from somebody who normally works with 60 layers, suddenly being limited to 20 was difficult. Word of warning, between the software and hardware limitations, the program became very unstable. And it crashed a lot whenever I pushed it past 18 layers. Which is an understandable problem. I am painting on a mobile device. It's, it's not going to have the power of a desktop or even a laptop. Now thankfully, Procreate does handle crashing better than most applications, in my experience. So I rarely lost any progress and was back to painting in like, less than 30 seconds. The trade-off being able to zoom into this amazing level of detail before you can see any kind of pixelization. This painting has some of the highest level of, like, small detail I've used, and it's all because I had the extra pixel count to work with. This painting had a lot of topics to cover, and I'm sorry if I didn't break down each part as much as I probably could have, but if I did that, the video wouldn't be 20 minutes, it would be closer to two hours. And my goal with these episodes is to provide an enjoyable experience while still providing at least a somewhat timely walkthrough and tutorial of the painting process. But I feel like there were just like a ton of things in this episode that I could explain with more detail. Which brings me to the next thing I actually want to talk about. I want to start considering other types of art and painting videos that I could post to the channel with some more frequency. Content that you might all still enjoy, but will help to fill in the gaps in between the big episodes. So my question for all of you is, what element of this painting would you like to see me expand on and build into a full tutorial? It could be anything from metal or crystal to maybe how I use a tool like liquify or symmetry. How about the fur? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, well, my mom's vote is for the fur. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I'll get to work on whatever you decide. But that's gonna be all for today. If you enjoy my videos, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as it really does help out. And if you've got any questions at all, please feel free to ask down in the comment section and I will do my very best to get to each and every one of them and answer them to the best of my abilities. Thank you all for joining me and I hope to see you all next time.